بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد one of the reoccurring themes issues that the Quran has spoken in deep detail in its regard and what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has talked about in many 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 authentic hadith is the importance of the heart that Allah Ta'ala has created and he put it inside of every single Bani Adam. Many hearts have been described in the Quran. You have a sick heart, a heart that's diseased, is sick. You have a heart that's divided. You have in the Quran the heart that is asleep and is not aware of its reality, many, many, many hearts. Allah has been said about the Quran, about the heart in the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. We want to take this opportunity, inshallah, to mention just some things concerning one of the hearts, and that's the best heart that was mentioned in the Quran. It's the heart that's called the healthy heart, the qalb, the salim, the healthy heart. Everyone here, we have a religious responsibility because we're not angels. We make sins and we make mistakes. We have ups, we, have, we go down. We go to the right, we go to the left. We have a religious responsibility, all of us, to try to cultivate ourselves and to cultivate our hearts, to identify what kind of heart do you have? Is it a diseased heart? Is it a heart that is in turmoil? And once identifying that particular heart, trying to make a big struggle to be a person, a sahib, the companion, the owner of a salim heart, healthy heart, a healthy heart. First thing that I want to mention about the heart, and there are a lot of things to mention, is what the Prophet said in an authentic hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about all of our hearts. He said in the hadith as sahih, in fil jasad mudgha idha saluhat صلح الجسد كله وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب. Verily, inside of your body, there is a morsel of flesh. If that morsel of flesh is pure, if it's wholesome, if it's good, then the rest of your body is going to be like that. And if that morsel of flesh is no good, is rotten, it's a problem, then the rest of your body is going to be like that. And then he said, verily, that morsel of flesh is your heart. So this hadith shows the importance of the heart in that it is the central command center. It's like the governor. It's the general. And the rest of your limbs are the soldiers. Your arms, your legs, your eyes, your tongue, all of them are following the reality of the heart. So if you ever see a person who has foul language, a man or woman, they can hardly articulate themselves without saying the terrible swear words. They swear like soldiers. If you see someone like that, then that's a diseased heart. It's a sign that a person has a diseased heart. Because if his heart was correct and it was wholesome, what comes out on the tongue would be wholesome as well. What's seen in his limbs is going to be wholesome. Another issue about the importance of the heart is that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us at taqwa ha huna wa ashara ila qalbi thalatha marat. He said, at taqwa is located right here. And he pointed to his heart three times. At taqwa is right here. So a person's taqwa, his iman, his ikhlas, his niya, his yaqeen, his tawakkul is right here. It's not in his head, theoretic. A person says, I know I don't pray, and I know I drink khamr, and I know I don't wear hijab. I know I don't do all of those things, but my heart is pure. No, that person is talking from his brain. He's talking from his brain. He's being philosophical. And although the brain is important and the intellect is important, no doubt about that. It's another discussion for another time. It's the individual's heart that is going to determine if he really truly has iman and a taqwa, when Usam ibn Uzaid, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, when he was fighting that man in jihad, the man was trying to kill Usama, Usama was trying to kill that man. 
he finally got the upper hand and he stabbed him. And before stabbing him, the man said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Usama told the Nabi what happened. The Prophet said, Ya Usama, you killed him after he said, La ilaha illallah. He said, He only said, La ilaha illallah, because he knew I was about to kill him. The Nabi said, Did you kill him after he said, La ilaha illallah? Usama said, He was trying to kill me. He only said it because I got the upper hand. The Nabi asked him a third time, Did you kill a man? After he said, Yo, Ya La ilaha illallah, what you gonna do with La ilaha illallah, Yomu Qiyama? Ya Rasulullah, he only said it because I got the upper hand. And then the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Afala shaqaqta an qalbuhu hatta ta'lam aqalaha am la? Why didn't you open up his chest so that you can check his heart to see if he said it with sincerity or not? So that hadith goes to show, Ikhwani, that the heart is important because it is the place of your iman. It's the place of the feelings that people develop, good and bad, about everything in their existence. As for the mind, people can detach themselves from their reality based upon their mind. Another thing about the heart that the Nabi said, the heart in Arabic is qalb, qalb with a qaf, not a calf. Don't say kalb. Because if you say kalb, that's a dog. Kalb, kalb. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, he said, innama summi al qalbu qalban li tuqallubihi. The heart has been called kalb because it always turns. The word qalaba in Arabic, where the word heart comes from, qalaba in qalaba, taqallaba, it means to always be fluctuating. So the heart is called heart because that's the nature of it. One day you're up, one day you're down. You're not going to always be up and you're not always going to be a down. If you are, there's a problem. Your heart is constantly changing. So the Nebi and showing us about this reality he taught us that we should not be complacent. You are Muslim today, you go to sleep tonight and you wake up as a kafir. Something can happen to you in your life where you'll forsake your religion, just like that. You're on the sunnah today, you go to bed tonight, you wake up tomorrow, you're on bid'ah. He used to make sajda, prostration, and he used to make dua, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala dinin. Oh, the one, Allah, who is the owner of the hearts, and you caused the hearts to turn, establish my heart on your deen. Aisha said when the Nabi used to swear, he used to swear and say, Wallahi, tallahi, billahi. He used to say, Eemullah, waymullah. He used to say, Warabbil Kaaba, by the Lord of the Kaaba. He used to say, I swear by the one whose hands my soul is in. She said, the method that he swore by more than anything else is he used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa muqallib al I swear by the one who changes the hearts. So a person today, a person today, he can be shakir. He's appreciative of what Allah gave him. And he has thankfulness to Allah. She's thankful to Allah. Something happens, he becomes a person who's not shakir. So that goes to show, Khwani, the importance of sisters, the importance of always being a perpetual battle and effort, all of us, to cultivate our hearts. And even if you make a mistake, Astaghfirullah wa utubu ilayhi. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He didn't make us like the Malaika. He gave us hearts. The Malaika, they don't have hearts. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, brought that Quran, and that Quran describes something about the hearts. Allah said in the Quran in Surah At Tawbah, or Surah Al Ahzab, in the beginning of Surah Al Ahzab, Ma ja'alallahu li rajulin min qalbaini, Ma ja'alallahu li rajul. Allah didn't put two hearts in one man's body. You don't have two hearts. Meaning, one heart you're going to worship Allah and another heart you're going to worship other stuff and give Allah his haq. Allah gave you one heart to focus on his ibadah and in focusing on his ibadah, it doesn't mean that an individual doesn't have any nice things that happen to him, not joyful, but it just goes to show the purpose that Allah Ta'ala created that heart. He didn't create that heart for anyone other than him. That the person has to tame it 
and bring it under control to try to make it a qalb salim. You got to make jihad about that. We have to make jihad about that. To get a heart that Allah Azawajal is pleased with. So that heart is called the qalb salim. Qalb salim is a term that was used in some ayahs of the Quran. Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Shu'ara. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بُنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهِ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ No money is going to benefit anyone, nor will his children be of any benefit. The only thing that will benefit is the one who comes to Allah with a qalb salim, with a pure heart, a healthy heart. That's one ayat, shu'ara, where it's mentioned. Another ayat, Allah mentioned about Ibrahim and he described Ibrahim. وَإِمِّنْ شِيْعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ رَبُّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ And from the descendants of Nuh was his son Ibrahim who came to Allah with a pure heart. A pure heart. So Ibrahim, he had a qalb salim like all of his brothers from the prophets and the messengers. So what is the pure heart in the Quran and the Sunnah? Is it what some of the people say? I don't pray. I don't pray. But also, I don't get high. I don't drink. I don't drink. I don't get, do drugs. I'm always on time. I'm truthful. I don't wear hijab, but I, I'm still truthful. People like me. I'm a decent human being. My heart is good. Is that the qalb salim? The person who's not practicing, but they are decent people. They are decent. There are some people, even kuffar, disbelievers, not Muslim. There are some who are trustworthy. Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَإِمِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ إِنْ تَأْمَنْهُ بِكِنْتَارٍ يُوَدِّهِ إِلَيْكِ from the Christians and the Jews or some people, if you give them a whole treasure of gold to hold it for you, to safeguard it for you, they will hold it for you. And when you come, they'll give it to you just like you gave it to them. There are kuffar who are like that. A Muslim can't think all Muslims are perfect specimens of human beings and all non-Muslims are no good. The Muslim has to believe all Muslims, no matter how terrible they are in their behavior and their crimes and sins, if they die, la ilaha illallah, they're going to Jannah. And all non-Muslims, no matter how good they may be in their character and so forth and so on, if they make shit with Allah, no matter how good they are, they're going to the hellfire because Allah didn't create mankind to take partners along with him. We have to believe that. But that doesn't mean that every non-Muslim is just no good. No, some non-Muslims are more trustworthy than some Muslims. So the point here is, the point here, is the pure heart, the heart of the person who is truthful, professional, clean, respectful, respectable, but they don't practice the religion. They say, I have a clean heart. I have a healthy heart. No. The qalb salim has been described in many ayat of the Quran and many ahadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of the characteristics of the qalb salim is, it is the heart that is full of a tawheed. It loves Allah. And it loves the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's filled with monotheism. It hates shirk. It hates innovation with a passion. It loves, and when it loves, it loves for Allah. When it hates, it hates for Allah. When it gives, it gives because of Allah. When it refrains from giving, it refrains because of Allah. Someone comes to the Qalb Salim and he says, listen, I don't have the best job in the world, but I'm trying hard and I'm a practicing Muslim and I know that I'm not from your culture or your tribe or your caste. I want to marry your sister. I want to marry your daughter. The heart that is Salim is going to investigate that situation and he's going to say, yes, based upon the deen, this person is the one who I'm looking for. He checks many of the, the boxes concerning compatibility and he gives based on that. The Qalb Salim is the one, if a rich non-Muslim came or rich relative, a nephew came, rich nephew, educated and rich, came to marry his daughter, to marry his sister, he comes, and the, the, the Qalb Salim says, do you pray? They say, no, I don't pray. Then you're not going to have my... He refrains from giving for Allah. That's the Qalb Salim. 
The qalb salim, ikhwani, based on the Quran, the sunnah, is the heart that is uh, expansive, is, is open. It's open for the nur of Allah, it's open for guidance, for the light of Allah, it's open for everything that is good. From the favors that Allah bestowed upon the Nabi is what he said in the Quran in the question, rhetorical question. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Didn't we open up your heart for you, Ya Muhammad? We made you an individual who was easy going. You weren't rough. You weren't tough. We made you so that everybody in this audience, you knew how to deal with the youngster, the woman, the arrogant, the ignorant, the one who made a mistake, your enemy. Didn't we open up your heart as a favor unto you? That's the qalb salim. Again, he gets mad for himself. If the, he gets mad for Allah. If the Nabi were to, if he were a person who used to get mad for himself, he would have been doing a lot of stuff to those people from the kuffar. Not to mention his companions as well. Like the one who urinated in the masjid. The qalb salim knows how to be patient and not take that personally. But instead, get the optimum out of that situation by guiding the individual and teaching others. That's the qalb salim that has al inshirah. Musa, when he was sent to Fir'aun, he asked Allah for that type of heart. Oh my Lord, open up my heart. I have to go deal with this guy who says that he is Allah, arrogant. The qalb salim, he's not going to push arrogance with arrogance, haughtiness with haughtiness, ignorance with ignorance, oppression with oppression. He's going to push it back with that which is pleasing to Allah. That's the qalb salim. Allah mentioned in the Quran, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرُهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ If Allah wants to guide a person, give him that blessing and guide him, he opens up his heart to Al-Islam. So the qalb salim is the qalb, it's the heart that it loves Allah, it loves the messenger, thinks about Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it takes stock of itself, its behavior, and is trying to navigate through this hayat dunya in a way that is pleasing to Allah. Hey, shirk, hey, innovation. It's the heart that loves the remembrance of Allah in all of his shapes, all of his forms, and all of his fashions. The dhikr of Allah. If he's making a mistake and someone gave him nasiha, the qalb salim says, you're right. The haq is with you. They don't say something like, well, you think you're perfect? You give the person advice, say, well, will you think you're perfect? No, I don't think I'm perfect, but that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that what you did was not correct. The qalb salim, it just wants to be guided aright, to be correct with Allah. It loves to make salah. If a person is negligent with his prayer, or all of the prayers, or a number of the salah, then there's some issues. There are some issues. Does he have a qalb salim? If he had a choice to listen to the Quran, listen to a class, listen to a lesson, or listen to ghibah, listen to namima, watch a movie or something that's going to be a waste of time. If he chooses dhikr of Allah over the other stuff, that's a sign of a qalb salim. Allah mentioned ayahs in the Quran. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma inna al-qulub. Verily, by the dhikr of Allah, the hearts become tranquil. Sakina. Which hearts become Sakina? The ones that are Salima. He said in the Quran in describing the true believers, he said, The true believers are those people who, when Allah is mentioned, their hearts become trembling. They become trembled. They start to tremble. And when the ayat of Allah are read to them, the ayat of Allah, their iman increases. He goes to a lesson and his iman increases. He goes to the khutbah of al-Jumah and he listens to a khutbah attentive, attentively and his iman is, you know, his, his batteries get boosted. The class, the daros, the tape that he listens, the DVD, whatever it happens to be. That's the sign of the qalb salim. As for the person who likes ghiba, namima, that's a problem. Allah mentioned the possessors of the pure hearts, the healthy hearts. Those people who do the things that they do and their hearts are 
trembling. Aisha, when she heard this ayat of the Quran, she said, Ya Rasulullah, is this ayat referring to the people who they do bad deeds, like they drink khamar, and then after drinking khamar, their hearts are afraid for the sin. The people who do zina, and after committing zina, they're afraid for what they fell into. She thought that was the meaning of the ayat, because it's an indication that the person has iman, he made a mistake, and he's afraid. Allah knows that he made a mistake. Like the man who told his children, if I die or when I die, take my body and burn me up and then throw my ashes all over the place. Allah said, what made you do that? He said, I was afraid that if you brought me back together, you're going to punish me. And Allah put him in Jannah because of that fear. So the ayah said, those people who do what they do and their hearts are trembling. She wanted to know, is it the people who, when they make mistakes, they're trembling with iman, fear of Allah? He said, no, bint as-siddiq, daughter of Abu Bakr. It's not those people. This ayat is referring to the people who they make salat, they fast, and they make hajj. And when they perform these ibadat, their hearts are afraid because they don't know if Allah accepted it or they didn't accept it. So one of the signs of a pure heart is the individual who. He or she are trying to practice Islam, but they don't feel comfortable like I'm, 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 I'm the real Muslim and everyone else is not the real Muslim. I'm the one who's really practicing, and everybody else is not. Or he looks at an individual who outwardly doesn't appear to be practicing, but he is practicing. He has a beard, he wears a thobe, she has hijab, whatever. And you look at other people and you say, and you say, I'm the real Salafi, I'm, I'm, I'm the real Muslim, and you're not. No, that's not the sign of the one who possesses a, 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 a Qalb Salim. Because the Qalb Salim is the one who he hopes that Allah Azawajal is accepting what he's doing. But he's afraid that Allah Azawajal is rejecting. And as a result of that situation, he's fearful. That's one of the ways you can tell, Ya Abdullah, if you have a heart that is pure, that is salim, the one that when you come to Allah Azawajal, it's not a judgmental heart. Don't get it twisted and don't misunderstand. I am not saying that a person who is not outwardly practicing is not blameworthy. Yeah, they're blameworthy to a certain degree. The point is, you, the one who is practicing, did you not read what Allah said in the Quran? Allah said about himself in the Quran, Allah knows best who has the taqwa. In this majlis right here, everybody is trying to practice, but he's a crazy person, majnoon. He doesn't have any aql. He's not aqil, he's not aqil. Someone sitting in here who's actually saying, I'm better than everybody else. You can't say that. You can't exist like that. You have to exist between the wing of, I hope that Allah will accept it and forgive me. And I'm afraid and fearful that Allah won't forgive me because everybody at any given time during his life, at any point during the day, everyone has done something or is doing something at every moment of your life. Today, you've done something or you're doing something that can render your deeds null and void. All of that practicing can come and it's no benefit. The prophet, he said, it may be that a man will say one word that's from those things that anger Allah. He doesn't consider it. But because of that word, he will be thrown into the hellfire for 70 seasons because of one word. It could be a swear word. It may not even have to be a word. It could be him saying to his mother, you give me sick or something like that. So how can a person exist thinking that just because he's practicing that his situation is guaranteed? So the Qalb Salim, it is the heart that, not judgmental, not in that type of way. In addition to that, Ikhwani, we should know that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam has described the human beings, the righteous servants of Allah Azza wa Jal, as being vessels. He said in an authentic hadith, Inna lillahi aniyatan min ahl al-ard wa aniyatu rabbikum qulub ibadihi salihin wa ahabbuhum ilayhi alyanuhum wa araqquhum Verily Allah has vessels in the earth. Vessels. Vessels. He has vessels in the earth. And the vessels of Allah are the hearts of his righteous servants. Those servants who are righteous and religious, the salihin. And he said the most beloved servants to him, these vessels, 
are the people who are easy going. Alianahum wa araq. They are the people who are gentle and the people who are light hearted. The qalb salim is the heart that is not rough and tough. It's just naturally rough and tough. No. Nope. Sometimes you have to be rough and tough. You know, you're about to slaughter the sheep for the Eid. You can't be faint hearted. People say, slaughter the sheep. You say, but the blood, the blood. No, you have to slaughter the chicken. You have to slaughter him. No, I saw, I saw that with my own eyes. I saw a grown man can't slaughter the sheep. So sometimes you have to go and you have to get the job and you have to kick the door open. Boom. And you say, here I am. It's me. I'm the most qualified. That's not arrogance. That's just you being sure of yourself. At this time, it's not nice to be soft like this. You got to put yourself forward right in that situation. So the point here is, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the hearts of the righteous people are the vessels of Allah. They're in the earth and they're the people who are the most gentle and the lighthearted individuals. Look what he said about the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضٍ غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ It was a rahmah, a mercy from Allah upon you, Ya Muhammad. Allah showed his favor upon you as a rahmah, that your heart was gentle and you were easy with them. If your heart was rough and tough with them, they would have dispersed from you and they would have left. That's the sign of the qalb as salim. These little kids that we are responsible for, our children, if you don't have a qalb salim, you're going to break your child, possibly break his spirit, break his back, maybe even break his bone if you're one of those violent people. The wife, the wife is da'ifa. She's weak. They're weak. That's how Allah created them. And that's not a misogynistic point of view. That's not a chauvinistic point of view. They are da'ifat that the Nabi says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if the person has a rough heart, hard heart, when they get crooked, when they go out of the way, I mean, we have to try our best to try to deal with that situation. The qalb salim, it knows how. It doesn't get angry for itself. It gets angry for Allah and addresses the problem in that particular way. And perfection is only with Allah. Now the opposite of the qalb salim is the heart that's dead. The heart that's dead. It's the heart of the kafir. It's the heart of the munafiq. It's the heart of the, it's the, heart of the munafiq. The person of bid'ah. Bid'ah. He loves worshiping Allah with shirk. Kufr. He loves it. And the ayat about the good heart. Allah Azza wa mentioned about the good heart. If the ayat of Allah are mentioned and it's read, their iman goes up. Their hearts start to tremble with the remembrance of Allah. The good hearts, they become trembling. Those people who do what they do, their hearts are trembling. They don't know. Is it accepted or not? The opposite of that, kafir, munafiq, person of bid'ah. If Allah is with Jill, in their heart, they love shit. They love kufr. When they love, they love for other than Allah. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كُحُبِّ اللَّهِ from those people or those who love, they take partners other than Allah and they love those partners more than they love Allah. You tell him, swear by Allah, he'll say, Wallahi, and he's lying. You tell him, swear by the Nabi, he'll swear and he'll only tell the truth. Allah will tell him in the Quran, if Allah is mentioned by himself, Qulu la ilaha illallah, I only worship Allah. The khutbah tells the people, don't worship the Nabi. Allah said, if Allah is mentioned by himself, those people who disbelieve, they become enraged with anger that you're calling them to worship Allah by himself. Muslims become enraged. You don't love Rasulullah. When you tell people, don't do the mawlid, don't make dua to other than Allah. Don't make dua to the saint in the grave. You don't love the awliya. No. No, that's not the issue. When it hates, it hates for itself, for its desires. I don't like him because he's not for my tribe. He has more money than me. 
you know these issues. When he loves, he loves for his desires, not because of Allah for Allah. The Nabi he said, "Thalathu man wajdahunna, aw thalatha man wajdahunna, thalatha man kunna fihi wajda halawat al iman." أن يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليهم ما سواهما وين يحب المرء ولا يحبه إلا لله. There are three things. If you have these three things in your repertoire, being a Muslim, three things. Whoever has these three things, he will taste the sweetness of iman. If this thing is in his heart, he will have sweetness of iman. First one, he loves Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. Love for Allah. He loves Allah and for Allah. Second one is, he loves an individual and he only loves him for Allah. He doesn't love him for the dunya or some money he's going to, he loves him for Allah. So he's able to advise him, he's able to take advice from him, he's able to take positions for and against. The third one is, he hates to go into kufr after Allah saved him from kufr, just as he hates to be thrown into the hellfire. So that hadith goes to show the importance of loving for Allah, not making shit with Allah. The dead heart, that's what it does. وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالْ أَسَاتِرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ When our ayat are read to him, he said, man, those are just stories of the ancients. No, the qalb salim, their iman arises, their taqwa arises. But the kafir, mushri, munafiq, mubtadi' you, Allah said, the Prophet said, these issues don't affect him. He said, those are the story of the ancients. What? Isa was born without a father. Noah lived 950 years. The flood came and, 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 and the great deluge destroyed the whole earth. You believe that. Jesus is coming back. You believe that. Those are stories of the ancients. That's the heart that's dead. It's dead. And the Nabi, he used to seek refuge in Allah from that. From his dua, he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min qalbin la yakhsha. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from a heart that doesn't have khushur, khashya. Now that can mean your own heart, that you yourself make that dua. Don't give me a heart like that. But it also can mean, because it's general, it also can mean beware of taking friends who are not practicing. The non-Muslim comes, he wants to marry your daughter. No, he has a heart that doesn't have khashya. It drinks. It doesn't see anything as being haram. You can't marry in that situation. You got to have wala wal bara. An innovator comes. Some situation comes. No. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in a heart that doesn't fear. Because if you're around the one whose heart is dead, you're going to have a problem. You are going to have a problem. The person who has a companion, a wife, a husband, his heart is dead. You're in trouble. The dead heart, it doesn't reflect. It won't fear Allah. It won't fear Allah in your rights or other than that. Allah mentioned in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبُّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Will they not contemplate the message of the Quran or are there locks on their hearts? So a person's heart, because of lack of iman, a taqwa, nur, he is locked. He can't understand. He said in the Quran, we prepare the Jahannam for many of the jinn and many of the mankind. They have hearts that don't reflect. They have hearts. They can't reflect. They have eyes they can't see. Ears they can't hear. These are the people who are like the cattle. Instead, they're worse off than the cattle. These are the people who are not cognizant of, again, the reality. Last point that we want to make concerning this issue, inshallah, concerning the pure heart and the dead heart. And we didn't talk a lot about the dead heart, but concerning the qalb salim, is that the companions, their hearts were salima. al irbad ibn Sariya, he said, we were sitting with the Nabi and he started giving us a speech that caused the hearts to tremble. And it caused the eyes to shed tears. We say, Ya Rasulullah, it says, if you're giving us a farewell speech, what do you order us to do? He says, it's about you're about to leave. It seems like you're going to die. You're talking in a way you didn't talk before. And then he went on to give them some advice about what to do if he were to die and during the time of fitna. 
So the point of that is it goes to show that the hearts of the companions, they tremble. The kalam of Allah and his Nabi affected their hearts because they have pure hearts. And they were listening to the kalam of the Nabi. Now this is important, guys, about Alul Hadith. They were listening to the Nabi and his kalam caused their hearts to tremble and it caused their eyes to shed tears. In the past, Alul Hadith, Alul Hadith used to be a people. They would not say, the Ahlul Hadith Sheikh would not say to the people, Al Imam al Bukhari said in Sayyid al Bukhari, Innam al A'malu bin Niyat. He wouldn't say that. Ahlul Hadith, and being different from everybody, they would say, when he wanted to use a Hadith, Al Imam al Bukhari said, Haddathani Abdullah bin Zubair, who said, Haddathani Ibrahim bin Taymi, who said, Haddathani al Qama, who said, Haddathani, and they would go through the whole chain of narration. And the students of Al Hadith used to love it. They used to love it, even with the repetition. Even with the repetition, they used to love it. And that's because the chain of narration is one of the special characteristics of this religion. And Al Hadith took care of it. And the people of innovation, they used to say, Until when you people gonna keep saying Hadethani, Hadethani? Until when? People of innovation used to hate that. They would say, Okay. Your hadethini, this one said, this one, they said, my Lord told me directly in my heart. Allah told me direct. So Ahlul Hadith used to do that just to be against those people. So the point here is, whether it's the Quran, whether it's the Sunnah, it's the deen of Allah. When the person hears about his religion and he's being reminded of religion, he should take the issue quite seriously. Doesn't mean he has to cry at everything and all the things and so forth and so on, but it does mean if an individual is inclined towards the kalam of Allah, he's inclined towards the dhikr of Allah, he's inclined towards those things that are wholesome, those things that are loving by Allah and to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then it's a sign of a qalb salim. If the Quran is being played and he feels upset and agitated, it's a sign his heart is dead or is diseased. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمْ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا In their heart there is a disease and Allah will increase them in disease. It could be magic. Someone put magic on the person so when he listens to the Quran he doesn't want to hear it. It could be. Something is wrong though. That's the point. Something is wrong. If it's not magic and that's just his situation. He doesn't want to listen to the Quran ever. Doesn't want to listen to advice ever. Doesn't want to listen to issues about his deen. That's a sign that his heart is dead. Is the one who was dead. He's dead. And so we gave him life and we gave him a light in his heart by which to walk with. Is he like the one who is in perpetual darkness and he's never going to come out? No, the one who has that nur in his heart and it has been given life is not like the one whose heart is dead. Their hearts are in denial and they're arrogant. Those people with their hearts are dead. So let us cultivate this issue. When it's time for the salat, when it's time for the salat, there are some people they don't want to pray. Grown ups, adults, they're not quick. It's time for salat. Time to make that's a sign a dead heart, a diseased heart, a sick heart. If it's time for salat, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to become active, nashita. He used to look forward. He would anticipate it. The munafiq, I told you, has the dead heart. Allah described them in the Quran. He said in many ayahs about them in the Quran about when they pray. They're only praying to show the people. And they don't remember Allah except a little bit. They're just praying because the people pray. But they come late and they lollygag to get ready for it. They, this lollygag. That's the munafiq when it comes to the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. La yathkurun Allah illa qalila. Fawaynun min musallin alladheena hum an salatihim sahun. Woe to those people who concerning this salat, they're negligent. Yeah, I pray, I pray, I don't pray if I don't pray. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us hearts that are salim, hearts that are wholesome, hearts that are healthy, and to protect us from the hearts that are problematic in the hearts that he's not pleased with. And that he gives us the wherewithal as well, inshallah, and the ability
to cultivate and to rectify those things that are in our hearts. The Nabi sallallahu before going to Mecca, when he was a young boy in Mecca, as I told you in that hadith, in that class we gave about alam nashrah laka sadrak, then we open up your heart for you, your breast. Allah Azza wa sent the angel, the angel took his heart out, and the angel took out of his heart that black stream. He said, this is what shaitan had inside of your heart. So if that's the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do you think about you and me? The Nabi said, in the shaitan yajri fi bani adam majra dam. Shaitan circulates in Ibn Adam the way his blood circulates. What organ is taking care of your circulation? It's that heart. If you take that heart out of your chest, you cut someone's heart out, you put it on the thing, it's going to be pumping like this for some time until no more oxygen, then it's going to start. Tremendously powerful organ that Allah has created. And it's an important organ. The Qalb Salim loves for Allah. It loves Allah. Doesn't make shit with Allah. Isn't inclined to innovation. Predisposed to hating innovation. The Qalb Salim is the heart that is gentle, forbearing, easygoing. The Qalb Salim is the Qalb that, again, it loves the dhikr of Allah Azzawajal, in all of his faith, shapes all of his fashions, and all of his forms. And Allah, my Lord and your Lord, is A'la, and he is A'lam. Jazakallah khairan Abu Usama for that very important topic and important reminder. There's a couple of questions. The first question is, what are the obstacles to attaining a pure heart? What are the main obstacles? One of the obstacles is to generally disobey Allah and to get away from his religion, the laws that he has legislated, like having a reality where you're not praying and you're not obeying Allah. Because then, as the ayah said, بَلْ kalla بَلْ rana ala قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah said that there's a blackness over their hearts because of what they used to do. And the Nabi advised, or he told us about this blackness. He said when a person commits a sin, he commits a sin, he doesn't pray something, he makes ghiba, nimima. Anytime he commits a sin, a blackness comes on his heart. If he doesn't make toba, he does another sin, blackness, 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 blackness. And the one who pushes the sin off, whiteness, 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 whiteness. So in the hadith that was collected by Imam Ahmed, it's a pretty long hadith. Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, he said that the Nabi said about this issue, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hatta yasir ala qalbain, abyad mithru safa, fala tudurruhu fitnatu ma damat al-samawatu wal-ard. والآخر أسود مرباد كالكوز مجخيا لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا إلا ما أشرب من قلب من هوا. So the person has one of two hearts. If something he makes a sin, he makes toba to Allah. Fitna comes, he pushes away, so it becomes white. The other one, he makes a sin and he keeps doing it, keeps doing it, becomes black. The Nabi said until the heart becomes one of two, one that is totally white like Safa, something pure and white like the driven snow. He said, fitna won't harm it as long as the heavens and the earth are there. He said, then the other heart is the one that's black, like the black vessel that has been turned to its side. Can't hold anything else, anything in it. The Nabi said, the person won't have the ability to determine what's right or wrong. There was a time he was trying to practice. He would say, he never would say, wallahi, and he wouldn't swear. He wouldn't swear about Allah lying. He made mistakes, but he wouldn't swear about Allah lying. But if he keeps doing certain, he'll start to swear about Allah and he's lying because the situation changed. So generally speaking, sins, having bad people. There's an ayat in the Quran, Surah Al-Ahzab. Allah Ta'ala mentioned to the believers, Ya ayyul ladhina aminu stajibu lillahi wa lil rasul. Ida da'akum lima yuhyikum. 
واعلموا ان الله يحول بين المرء وقلبه oh you believe obey the call answer the call of Allah and his messenger when they call you to that which will give you life and you should know that Allah comes between a person and his heart Allah comes between a person and his heart the scholars and Imam al-Suddi said one of the meanings of that it means when a person disobeys Allah Azza wa Jal Allah changes his heart because all the hearts are between his two fingers in a way that befits his majesty he'll change the person's heart because of that sin and he'll wake up as a kafir after being a Muslim, mubtadi, after being on the Sunni, and so forth and so on. So bad company, not practicing the religion. Another thing that will destroy the heart is excessive laughter. Al-Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Iyakum wa kathrat al-dahak, fa inna kathrat al-dahak tumitu al Beware of excessive laughing, laughing, because when you laugh a lot, it will cause your heart to die. You know that guy, Eddie Murphy? Eddie Murphy is funny. If you sit and you watch, this, that stuff is funny. Some of those comedians are funny. But if you give yourself to that and you're always laughing like that, you're always laughing like that, laughing like that, the Nabi said that will cause your heart to die, to laugh all the time, like that. The ayat of the Quran or the Nabi, he said, if you knew what I knew, you would laugh less and you would cry more. It's not a lot to laugh about. But that doesn't mean you should walk around Abbasa wa Tawalla looking upset. You shouldn't do that. Because the Nabi, he had a friend, he had a companion. His name was Abdullah. They used to call him Himar. He used to play practical jokes. And the Nabi used to laugh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His companions used to laugh. They used to play jokes. They used to say things that were funny. So you have to have some laughter. He's mentioned in the Quran, huwa alladhi yubki wa yudhik. He's the one who causes you to die and he causes you to laugh. Laughing and crying is all from the balance of a human being. You need all of that stuff. Can't laugh all the time and can't cry all the time. So laughing a lot will cause the heart to die. Also, eating a lot. Eating a lot. Talking a lot. A lot of kalam. Fudul al-kalam. The extra kalam. Anybody who gives himself to extra curricular activities too much visits a lot, eats a lot, talks a lot, is going to take away from his focus. He's going to have to spend time and energy on those particular things. So those are some of the issues that will cause the heart to die. Another thing is hatred. Hatred, uh, envy, envy. These things will kill you, will kill your heart. Mm. Exposing yourself to, to, to bad sights. Like I was giving you the example of the man who could not kill the sheep. If there's a man who's a butcher and he's cutting all the time, cutting, he doesn't have a problem now with shedding blood. He becomes desensitized to that particular issue. So if a person gives himself to exposing himself to something over and over and over again, he becomes desensitized to that particular issue. And that's one of the reasons why we have to avoid people and we have to seclude ourselves sometimes just to contemplate about our reality and our situation. To become people who have that level of zuhd, just to back up off of the people, spend some time to cultivate and just to rectify yourself and to make tawbah, inshallah.